Amplification, presented by the National Forensic Science Technology Center. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. This is an enzymatic process in which a specific region of DNA is replicated over and over again to yield many copies of a particular sequence. PCR was developed in 1985 by Kerry B. Mullis, who was awarded the 1993 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work. PCR is the act of copying DNA in the laboratory, and it works similar to the way your own cells replicate their DNA. With nuclear DNA testing, STRs, or short tandem repeats, are what are copied. STRs are microsatellites that are called short tandem repeats. They have highly repetitive sequences, and each repeat unit is about two to six base pairs. They are polymorphic regions of DNA. The number of repeat units differ between chromosomes as well as between individuals. Polymorphisms may result from DNA recombination during meiosis. Polymorphisms may also be caused by replication slippage. In this diagram, the repeat region is variable between the samples while the flanking regions where PCR primers bind are constant. Here are two areas on the DNA. The sequences of bases are the same, but the number of times they are repeated are different. If the number of repeats are the same, then both alleles are the same length, and they are considered homozygotes. If the number of repeats are different, as shown in the diagram, then the alleles differ and can be resolved from one another, and they are called heterozygotes. The primer positions define the PCR product size. During PCR, a fluorescent dye label is attached to the primers. STRs are preferred genetic markers because rapid processing is attainable, they are abundant throughout the genome, they are highly variable within various populations, the small size range allows multiplex development, allelic lattice simplify interpretation, and PCR allows the use of small amounts of DNA material. Also, the small product size is compatible with degraded DNA. This diagram shows the human chromosomes. The loci labeled in yellow are the 13 core codis loci. And these are the chromosomes that they are found on. The two loci labeled in turquoise are found on the identifier kit supplied by Applied Biosystems and the loci penta E and penta D are found in the PowerPlex 16 kit provided by Promega. Amylogenin are the sex typing loci. Now let's go over the components of a PCR amplification master mix. First, you must have the template DNA, which usually ranges between one to 10 nanograms. Also included are primers, deoxynucleotide triphosphates, DNTPs, magnesium chloride, DNA polymerase, buffers, and BSA. The template DNA is the area of DNA that needs to be copied. The PCR sample may be single or double-stranded DNA or RNA, and usually 0.5 to 2 nanograms of DNA is targeted. Approximately 20,000 target copies are optimal, and preferential amplification can occur if the target amount is too low. The next component of the PCR amplification master mix are the primers, which have a concentration between 0.1 to 1.0 micromolars. PCR primers are oligonucleotides hybridizing to opposite strands and flanking the region of interest in the target DNA. Several variables must be taken into account when designing PCR primers. These are primer length, melting temperature, annealing temperature, complementarity, primer structure, and sequence content. Primer length is typically 18 to 30 bases long to increase specificity and decrease cross-hybridization. The melting temperature is a measure of the stability of the primer template DNA. Temperatures in the range of 52 to 58 degrees Celsius produce better results. The melting temperature is affected by the primer length and GC content. The melting temperature difference between primers should be less than 5 degrees Celsius in order to avoid preferential amplification. The annealing temperature is typically 5 degrees Celsius below the lowest melting temperature of the primers. 
optimal annealing temperature yields less nonspecific amplification. Self-complementarity primers should be avoided so that there are no intra-primer homology beyond four base pairs. This is to prevent the formation of primer dimers called self-dimers. Primers with complementarity with other primers, especially at the three prime end, need to be avoided to prevent the formation of primer dimers called cross dimers. Primer structure and sequence content. The GC content. A 40 to 60% GC content is recommended for both primers. Greater than three repeats of G or C at the three prime end of the primer should be avoided to prevent the formation of primer dimers. Primers with secondary structure should be avoided. Primers with long runs of the same base should be avoided. This prevents breathing of the primer, which may lead to mispriming. Other considerations for primers include using degenerate primers and fluorescently labeled primers. Degenerate primers. Point mutations at the primer binding locations may cause null alleles. Degenerate primers are a set of primers that have several options in the sequence allowing for point mutations. When you type a sample with one kit, it will appear as a homozygote if a null allele is present. But when typed with degenerate primers, the null allele may be revealed, showing that it was truly a heterozygote. Methods for fluorescently labeling DNA fragments. Double-stranded DNA molecules may be added with fluorescent intercalating dyes, as shown in the diagram to the left. The fluorescence of these dyes is enhanced upon insertion between the DNA bases. Alternatively, a fluorescent dye may be attached to a nucleotide triphosphate and incorporated into the extended strands of a PCR product. This is shown in the diagram on the top right. The most common method of detecting STR alleles is the use of fluorescent dye labeled primers, shown in the depiction bordered by a green line. These primers are incorporated into the PCR product to fluorescent label one of the strands. Fluorescent labeling of DNA with primers. Dyes are attached to one primer in a pair used to amplify a STR marker. Dyes are coupled to oligonucleotides through NHS esters and amine linkages on the 5' end of the primer. Dye labeled oligonucleotides are incorporated during multiplex PCR amplification, giving a specific color tag to each PCR product. PCR products are distinguished using a CCD imaging on the 310 genetic analyzer. The next component of the PCR amplification master mix are deoxynucleotide triphosphates, DNTPs, at a concentration of 20 to 200 micromolars each. Deoxynucleotide triphosphates. It is important to keep the four DNTPs, which are DATP, DTTP, DCTP, and DGTP in equal concentrations, between 20 micromolars to 200 micromolars, to minimize misincorporated nucleotides. Lowering the DNTP concentration can improve fidelity of the incorporation process. The next component of the PCR amplification master mix is magnesium chloride, with a concentration between 0.5 to 2.5 millimolars. Magnesium chloride concentration may affect the following. Primer annealing, strand disassociation temperature of template, strand disassociation temperature of PCR product, product specificity, formation of primer dimers, and enzyme activity and fidelity. Generally, increasing the free magnesium concentration increases yield and decreases specificity and fidelity. When using Amplitac DNA polymerase, too little free magnesium will result in little or no PCR product, and too much free magnesium ion may produce a variety of unwanted products and promote misincorporation. The optimal amount is in the range of 0.5 to 2.5 millimolars. The next component in the PCR amplification master mix is DNA polymerase, with concentrations between 0.5 to 5 micromolars. Amplitac Gold DNA Polymerase Originally isolated from the thermophilic eubacterium Thermus aquaticus, it is now supplied as a recombinant enzyme from E. coli. 
The enzyme is highly purified and is free of nonspecific endo or exonucleases. It is a highly processive 5' to 3' DNA polymerase which lacks a 3' to 5' exonuclease activity. It is chemically modified to be inactive until the reaction reaches 95 degrees Celsius for 10 or 11 minutes. This is hot start PCR. This improves the specificity, sensitivity and yield of PCR. And it also allows for room temperature amplification setup. Why use hot start PCR? Regular DNA polymerases exhibit some activity below their optimal temperature. Therefore, during setup, primers can anneal non-specifically to the template DNA at room temperature, and non-specific products may result. Also at low temperatures, primers may bind to other primers forming primer dimers, which can be preferentially amplified over template DNA. With hot start PCR, the DNA polymerase does not show any activity at room temperature so there is no extension of nonspecific products or primer dimers. The next component of the PCR amplification master mix is the buffer, which is at a pH of 8.3. Gene Amp PCR Buffers The Gene Amp 10x PCR buffer is composed of 500 millimolars of potassium chloride, 100 millimolars of TRIS-HCl, which is at a pH of 8.3 at room temperature, 15 millimolars of magnesium chloride, and 0.01% weight per volume of gelatin, which is BSA. The recommended dilution buffer for Amplitac Gold DNA polymerase has a pH of 8.3 at room temperature, which will decrease to pH of 6.9 when heated to 95 degrees Celsius. The last component of the PCR amplification master mix is BSA at a concentration of 100 micrograms per milliliter. BSA and other additives. In some cases, adding the following compounds can enhance the efficiency or specificity of PCR. Betaine, bovine serum albumin, detergents, dimethyl sulfoxide, gelatin, glycerol, pyrophosphatase, and spermidine. Bovine serum albumin helps reduce the effects of inhibition on PCR. PCR instrumentation. The instrument used to perform PCR is a thermal cycler. Thermal cyclers allow for the rapid and accurate heating and cooling of DNA samples, which is crucial to PCR. Modern thermal cyclers have a heated lid. This prevents PCR reagents from condensing on the top of the tube during the temperature cycling. PCR cycling process. This table shows the thermal cycler parameters for the two most common commercially available amplification kits. In the polymerase chain reaction process, there are three main stages. First, denaturation at about 94 degrees Celsius. This is the separating of the DNA strands. This is followed by annealing of the primers at approximately 59 degrees Celsius to both single strands. And then, extension by the incorporation of DNTPs at approximately 72 degrees Celsius. This process is one cycle and they are usually between 25 to 35 cycles in the entire PCR process. The initial incubation of the PCR process is performed at approximately 95 degrees Celsius for 11 minutes, and this is to activate the Amplitac Gold DNA polymerase. Denaturation is performed at approximately 94 degrees Celsius. During the denaturation, the double strand melts open to single-stranded DNA. All enzymatic reactions stop for example, the extension from a previous cycle. Incomplete denaturation allows for snapback to occur, which reduces product yield. Annealing is performed at approximately 59 degrees Celsius. Ionic bonds are formed between the primers and the template DNA. The polymerase can attach and starts copying the template. The higher the temperature, the more specific binding occurs. Extension is performed at approximately 72 degrees Celsius. This is the ideal working temperature for the polymerase. TAC DNA polymerase can add approximately 35 to 100 base pairs per second. The bases are complementary to the template, and they are coupled to the primer on the 3' prime side. The polymerase adds DNTPs from 5' prime to 3', prime. reading the template from 3' prime to 5' prime side, bases are added complementary to the template. 
final extension. This is performed at approximately 60 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes, and it ensures complete adenylation. If there is excessive minus A, an additional extension cycle can be performed if allowed by the laboratory's SOPs. Polymerase chain reaction is an exponential copying process. First, you start off with one copy of the DNA. After one cycle, you then have two copies of the DNA. After a second cycle, you will then have four copies of the DNA. And then after a third cycle, you will have eight copies of the DNA. To determine the number of copies based on the cycle number, it is simply 2 to the power of the cycle number. Controls used in PCR. There are two main controls used in PCR. They are a positive and negative control. A positive control is DNA that is supplied by makers of the amplification kits whose concentration is known. This is used to ensure there are no problems with the PCR process, whether it be from the reaction components or the instrument itself. A negative control contains all the PCR reagents but no DNA. This is used to ensure that there is no contamination in the reagents or that none was introduced during amplification setup. Critical factors to remember for successful amplification. Wear gloves. Change gloves to prevent contamination. Use aseptic technique. Use only plug tips. Use only sterile DI water. Tack is kept in the DNA free freezer. When not in use, it shall be kept in the freezer and placed back in the freezer as soon as possible. Protect the primer from light while in use. The fluorescent dyes attached to the primers are light sensitive. The master mix should be prepared just before use. Dilutions and calculations for proper template amount should be performed prior to amplification setup. Tubes should be properly labeled. Only one tube should be open at a time. Work in a hood if possible. If not, use a face mask and avoid talking, coughing, or sneezing over the tubes. Any human DNA introduced into the tube will be amplified. So if your DNA or DNA from someone else gets into the tube, it will be amplified. Also, develop a method to keep track of where you are during the setup process. So if a distraction occurs, you can easily find where you've stopped. This avoids missing tubes or double loading or putting the wrong sample in the wrong tube.